2022, I got signed up with Hunt and Fool this year and I drew a sheep tag for Bighorn Sheep in Central Idaho. And Trav, Tom, and I are going down for the opening. We got one of these. I'm not used to this in Alaska. This is a truck, and so you can put a lot of stuff in here. And so we were loaded up pretty good. And Trav and I are going to fly down, and Tom's going to drive down and meet us there. So we're going to have a lot of logistics and access points because there's some backcountry airstrips, and there's also uh, roads, which is pretty cool. So we're pretty excited. Super hot. Um, I don't think anyone's ever big one sheep hunted before. We got a little sheep hunt experience and we're just going to kind of go down a couple days early and try and figure it out like we usually do. And uh, super excited. Putting in some av gas. How much? How much what? How much? Seven dollars a gallon. Ouch. Out. Need a couple of those gallons. Our ride has arrived. Hey Tom. Thanks for driving six and a half hours. So I don't pick up good trackers, but I'll trust my instincts on this one. Okay. Back in right here. Lots of fires this year. Luckily, it's not so smoky that we can't see. It looks like a big old base camp. We should ask them where the fire is, huh? Or Look at that fire line they got put in. Whoa. They're, gonna, they're gonna stop it right here. It's cool. Well, we Adam, just continue straight. Look at this tent. We, just, we don't want our tent to look like that. Yeah. Trav's whining about his junker pickup. We have been traveling for three days, it feels like, <laughs> on this road, Oregon Trail. Oh my goodness, we, I mean, we literally have been on this road for four hours, I think. And uh, it just keeps gradually getting worse. I told Adam, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna ruin a paint job on a fairly new pickup. If it gets that bad, he's gonna be walking on the top. Well, we made it after 20 hours of driving to the middle of nowhere, to the middle of nowhere. And then there's, this is the camp spot. So we're here to make a flat spot, get the rocks out, set up the tents. So we have had multiple friends in the past that have hunted this unit for sheep. We are grateful for their help and getting us some good leads on where we should start scouting. We were warned in advance that other tag holders will most likely have their tents there as well. And that's just the joys of public land hunting. This is my cot right here, about a queen size bed. Pretty excited about that. That's Adam's there. Tom grabbed one out of some storage room. And um, it's pretty sweet, Tom, why don't you lay on it? Yeah. Try it out. Try it out, show us what. So it's suspended by straps. It's supposed to be an air mattress, but there's no air mattress. There's <laughs> <laughs> a strap here, a strap strap here, and then one that goes across his stomach. Yeah. How I don't that? see what's wrong with that. I don't see what you guys are complaining about. It's actually, it's actually pretty comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's sunk, he's sunk, it's like a hammock. You're sunk into the strap. How is your cots? This is look like nice and comfy. Mm -hmm. Great. It's two days before season. Tom and I are going to go this way. Travis is going to go that way. We're going to split up and we're going to find a ram and then hopefully shoot him on opening day. But hard to see we got three big spotting scopes we're gonna cover a lot of ground and then see what we see I did glass a good band of rams I didn't have a phone scope so um, I had a free hand the video on my phone not the greatest video but you can at least see the size of, of the one that I think is would be a shooter for Adam the batteries went dead on our radio so when I get closer to him I'll we'll get the story I came here and then I write about kind of I don't know I came down here without a headlamp because I didn't want to spook anything. Mm -hmm. Down this drainage, I thought I heard head smashing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's freaking weird, but it's super quiet. There's squirrels and grouse and everything. Sounds like an elk running around. And then over here, I heard head smash. And so I was kind of wrapping over this ridge. Look at this. Could have echoed. Like, yeah, but it sounded super low. And I'm just like, man, that's crazy. So I thought it was over here. I wrapped down this way. And then like an elk bugle, it went again right there. And then I was able to pinpoint it like wow. two minutes later. I saw the two smaller rams and they were hooked together fighting. And then the big one was behind and then he came out. 
Holy smokes. That thing looks heavy. So a friend of ours last year missed a giant ram in the same spot. This may be the same ram. There's just a touch smaller. It looks, it's like a shooter to me. Where's Tom's phone? I didn't have a phone scope. Do so. you want to be able to see the screen? It's all glared. So there you go. So let me get to our. So I walked a long ways this morning and didn't see anything. And then I talked to a guy that said the wolves were howling in the drainage I was at three days ago, and it had that eerie feeling. That's how the conversation came up. I said it was dead calm. I didn't hear anything. Not a squirrel. Didn't see anything moving. He said, "Yeah, the wolves were howling." So that's the there. backside. So he's like a. He's got good curls. He's just. He's not as heavy as Adams. Yeah. But yeah, you can got a nice body tight. Yeah, he has. I Isn't, saw that. That's what I saw first. And then he disappeared. And then I saw the young ones. Where's the? Oh, that's a video. Just doesn't drop as low and carry the mass. That was heavy. It's still a good one. This is when he was bedded. Wow. That's awesome that you guys saw some. Yeah. We thought you were gonna see 15. <laughs> so he looks good. He he looked like he was broomed there for a second on that one. Cool, man. This is what happens when you ask for free help. Hard to find a sheep when you're sleeping. They're super tasty from Peak. I'm trying to do the math. It says pour contents of one stick into 10 to 16 ounces of water, shake well, and to dissolve. What is it called? The Pink? The Pink Colada? Pinaculada. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out this. One of these contains 85 milligrams of caffeine. So how many to equal a 20 ounce Red Bull? Yeah, that's, I don't know. Like a box? Like a case? Like a case. I'm gonna do two. Call her good. I feel like my job is to walk around the whole perimeter and find where the sheep aren't so that we don't have to waste our time there because usually it takes three days to find where the sheep are or the animal is that you're hunting. So I'm going around and taking all those options out so we don't have to waste our time once hunt season starts. Thank goodness Adam first crack of daylight that we got here heard rams hitting horns and um, found one that he's going to be happy with so Adam's going to head out and try and just keep an eye on that yeah. morning and night during the day sleep on that ram so we can go after him in the morning Tom and I are going to go the opposite direction 5 to 10 miles and we are going to glass different basins to either rule that out or find a bigger ram. Down here on my sheep hunt in central Idaho, this some big nasty country. Got here a couple days before season and came in the first morning. There's a big trail, there's horse trails down here which makes it nice. And Tom and Trav went one way and I went the other way and I found a good ram. He's in a band of three rams. Don't know how big he is. I think he's at least 165 inches, but he looks he looks real heavy, and I definitely want to shoot him. And then I came back to camp that day, and then last night I came back, and they were in the same spot. Watched him feed, and then this morning I was going back in to see him, and uh, just right when I got in close, the wind just didn't feel right, and it was kind of blowing on my back steady. And unlike a lot of sheep hunting, I was pretty close to these. I was about a half mile. When I watched him bed, and that's pretty close, and I didn't want him to win me, so I backed out. Came out here that Tom had seen yesterday, and there's one good one in there. He's not as big, and they're in a nasty spot. And so I hope I can kill the other one. We're gonna go back in tonight. Tomorrow's opening day. Hopefully, bed him down, figure out his pattern, and uh, go make a move. But got lots of time, lots of food. The weather's good. I'm shaking right now because it's cold. I'm sitting in the shade. Been here for a couple hours looking at these sheep, but I'll show you guys this country. It's rugged. Oh, they were. When Tom saw them, they were right here, and they bedded on this grass bench right back there. And today, I saw them, and then I saw them down here, and they fed up through that timber right there. And I think they bedded right in here somewhere in the trees, but I lost them. Okay, we're gonna try these out. I uh, ran into a young man that started building these last year at the Bighorn Show in Spokane. And it's kind of an experiment, but we are gonna put these on trekking poles and you lock them together and it gives you a cross like this. 
for shooting off of. Just my everyday trekking poles. And your shooting sticks. Can it go wider too? Just go whatever you want and poke it in the ground. Sheep opener is tomorrow and I've shot this gun at 2,000, 3,500 and just want to double check because we're close to 9,000 here. The sheep's going to be about 8,000 so it's always a good idea. Double check this. This case, I just love the case, dude. Call that for a pistol? Yeah, long range pistol. Mm. Look at that. Okay, talk to me. So we've picked a little tiny spot. You don't want to shoot like a giant rock. It's going to make you feel really good about yourself, but if it's a three or four foot rock, it's not going to tell you much. So we picked a little tiny rock, maybe four inch circle. Show me which one it right is. Right there. Oh, that one? I thought you were going A little tiny there. one. Okay. A little tiny one above. Oh, yeah. This is the one you pointed to yep. earlier. Okay. Above that one, right okay. there. That way we're going to get a good splatter. When he shoots, I'll be able to tell exactly how far off it is. So he's, he's going to be able to measure how big that rock is with his scope. 683, that's about the range of what we think the sheep is going to be at tomorrow. We're a little lower. We just had to get out of the way of not shooting across the road. Yeah, but this is the elevation and, the sheep's at. And... Um, not shooting close to camp or we're going to make anybody mad, so. Wow. What? Really good shot. Dead ram. Dead ram. How big is the rock? Hit a rock width to the left. You can see it. It made another white spot. The rock is about a third of a minute. Two inch rock. Two inch. Good shot. You hit four inches to the left. Do you see it? Yep. Yeah, good shot. Okay, you're recording. Anytime. One to the right. Yep. Pretty good. How big's that rock? Still would have been a minute. Still would have been a dead sheep. Slight okay, yeah. slightly high, but not bad. So I don't know what's going on here, boys. Trav, Trav just asked me, he's like, is this what anxiety is? And I said, I don't know. Like, I always thought people would get anxiety. They're just like, that's fine. Just go walk it off or <laughs> something like that. But the hardest thing is, like, you can read animal behavior. You can read the wind. Even predators, you know, you can kind of tell what animals are going to do. But we think some wolves moved in, pushed all the sheep that were easily accessible. So now everyone's splitting up. And we don't know what the people are going to do. And so... That's the unpredictable, unpredictable part, and I'm not used to it being from Alaska. So I think this is what anxiety is like, and I do not like it. So. <laughs> and how many tags this ta this unit has? I can't say that, or it gives the unit away. Well, okay. A handful. Yeah. There's a handful of tags, one non-resident tag, and about 48 pickups. So, yeah. Everybody brought seven people to Every class. Yeah, it's kind of like a Mossback Henry Mountains mule deer tag. Everyone's got like 40 people with them, and I only have Trav and Tom. I feel a little undergunned here, but they have good eyes, so uh, yeah, we'll see. But we just shot the gun and it went good. I mean, it's just another idea, depending on where they're at. We could drop down this seam in the dark, come around to that bench. If, if they're on this side of the A-frame, Anxiety to the next level. There's people everywhere. He's been sitting on this ram for three days, and uh, now all the Homo sapien humans show up, <laughs> infiltrating everything. And you can't figure out what a human's gonna do. There's people everywhere. There's boot tracks. There's more boot tracks than there are there's sheep. A, there's another person on every ridge. Yeah, there's people on every ridge. So there's gonna be some sad people tomorrow. Could be us. It could be everyone else. I don't know, but. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go in there to kill the ram like we normally would. And we wanna be in range, ready to shoot at legal shooting light. Regardless of the people, we're gonna do the same plan and hopefully get this thing. He's in a nice ram. I just got a glimpse of him for the first time. I've been walking like crazy trying to find a backup plan. I haven't seen one sheep. I haven't seen, I, that's the first sheep I've seen. It's the one that Adam's been watching. And so. he's a cranker. It's a. Uh, 
It's looking like that is the sheep we have to try and make happen. Calm down, little buddy. <laughs> I'm 6'2", 255, probably 250 now because I've been sweating, yet I feel so small. This is big, big country with no signs of life yet. Well, right when we came over this ridge earlier, I said, look at that bench down there. And then when we went around and saw the sheep, the sheep are just on the other side where you can't see them. I think what we're going to do, the thermals have been blowing down. The thermals are going this way in the morning. We're going to come over here and we're going to drop down in the timber so that the sheep can't see our headlights. We can't go out the ridge so they'll see us, hear us. We're going to come around this side of the slope. And we're going to go right there and try and get to that bench right there at the top of my finger eight to nine hundred yards to where we last saw the sheep went before we started coming this way to scope out our entry for tomorrow. All we can do is uh, do what we would normally do and just try and shoot it first legal light, get set up. All right, just getting ready for the morning. Getting ready for the day that we've been waiting for. side so they don't see our headlamps. We're just going to sneak around and pop up on this ridge where we saw the rams last night. If they're close to that, it should be about an 800 yard shot. Sign of shape yet. They were just, uh, I think they were in here somewhere. Yesterday. One minute to the right, Trav, it's coming from the right. Yeah, down, the wind's blowing down the canyon. Do a couple of trigger pulls, make sure there's no bullets in there. That's the big one on the left. The ram is calm and doesn't even know we're there. Adam is doing what he can to calm his nerves and do just a couple of practice trigger pulls before he makes the shot. We're taking our time here, no need to rush. The ram doesn't sense our presence. Oh, I'm not gonna rush you, but he is in a really good spot, so whenever you're- What? That's a big one? That's a big one. Are you sure? The one next to the red stump, yeah, right? Right above the red stump. I only see one in the trees, guys. Oh, next to the red stump? Yeah. To the left of the one in the trees. Yep. You got him? I'm gonna rearrange that. Do practice trigger pulls and then get ready because he's in a really good spot. Practice on his nose or whatever you got to do. You know what I mean, Adam? Yep, as soon as he turns, he's getting it. But don't rush it, he's got time.
You hit him. Watch for him. Right there. <laughs> Behind him. Oh, you move, guys. Yep. Set up on that rocks for you. Rain. Bottom shoot right there. Bottom shoot. Okay. Oh, yeah. One more. Got me a spotter. Nice spotter. Spot. I, don't know. I think it's the one in the front. Three. You got one? Opening day sheep. Came down here. Hiked three and a half hours in the dark to get on this ram. We've been I've been camping on him day and night for the last two days. It was like 860, had a great shot, solid rest. Could see my heartbeat, just let all my air out. Press trigger to the rear, I hit him, but I think there was some wind or I pulled it, I'm getting excited and it hit farther back in the guts, like mid guts. And, and we we're just gonna let him bed down and die. And then he just kept running and exposed himself. And so I had to shoot a lot more times and um, a lot. And I just wanted to kill the thing. I don't want animals to suffer. I really respect him. He's a huge ram, he's old. Um, the last shot I aimed, I think, three feet below point of impact. No wind. I think we're just starting to heat up. We have thermals off the rocks. I don't know. Yesterday, yeah, we can't really figure it out. Cause yesterday, yesterday in the heat of the moment, I was dinging rocks at 1,200 over and over and over. Elevation was perfect. There was a little wind, and we're like, we got it. And I did that to make sure I could make 800-yard shot and uh, wanted to pay the respect to the animal because of that and uh, didn't turn out. But... You know, not trying to make excuses, but just tried to finish the job and do everything we could. He's dead or he's dying. We got him in the spotter. He's dead. So it's a success. Um, I wish it would have went better, but that's hunting. It's not, not all perfect. It's not all fairy tales and rainbows and stuff like that, but the sheep's dead. And uh, I will say this, that was exceptional teamwork. That shot the ram. He was going through the timber. And we, we were shooting through these little timber seams. So we had to move the camera, move the spotter get on him, we would take turns, okay, you stay on him, I move to the right. We kept eyes on him, moving slowly through the timber, all the way down. He maybe went 300 yards, and um, finally got a good visual. I didn't have the camera on, uh, but the ram was getting wobbly, and uh, Adam got a shot and finished him off, and he ended off the cliff right there. We got him dead in the spotting scope. So thank goodness we have eyes on him. I knew the ram was going to die. The shot was far back, but I, I knew it was going to die, but I knew it was going to be hard to find. You can't so we track just, in the rocks, yeah. and it's going to be guts. You can't follow guts. So we just did our damnedest to uh, not take our eyes off them, and it, and it ended up working out. Like Adam said, they don't all work out pretty, but you did it, though. We, we did teamwork, and we got it done. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Tom was the man on the freaking running, gunning, range, this. Tom, get the range finder. Yeah. Can I use two tracking poles, though? See the white rock and a little draw above the green brush. So the, that little cliff band comes down. There's a little bench there. There's something white. I think it's that blow down. Ram should be dead right on that little bench. We're almost to the creek. I can't wait to take my boots off and let them soak in a cold creek for a minute. What are you girls waiting on? Let's go. Let's go, Adam. He's pretty stoked. About to unleash the Kraken. <laughs> this is why Adam needs custom Footwear. Custom, Lathrop, and since I've had to become a sheep, didn't think I'd like these, but these sheep feet, pretty legit, so it's a good combo. They need to air out. Oh, and darn tootin' tough socks, I'll tell you what. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at those prissy little feet, those look cute. Oh my god, that's cold. Mm. Right, right in the cliff somewhere there. Should be right on top. Sorry, you got a gun as a cushion. All right, come on, cheap shape. Don't roll a rock on my. Ooh, I'm backing up. I think he's right there, somewhere. I see hair, Adam. You got yourself a ram, Adam. Holy crap! Holy 
smokes? Wow. That is, look at that thing. Over here, you can see Holy it. Holy dude. Dude. That's insane. <laughs> dude. That's a huge ram. Dude. Whoa. Oh Holy. My gosh. Look at that thing. Oh. Dude. Are you sure this is a Southern Idaho hunt? Holy crap. <laughs> that is not a small ram at all. Dude. Yeah, you don't pass that up. Wow. That's a cranker, Adam. Wow. The big ram. I think it's humongous. Big Roman knot. Whoa. Look at the mass. That thing is massive. All the way down. They, that is bigger than I thought. I gotta get my hands on this thing. No one would pass that up. No one. What a cranker. Tom had to get his hands on him. Kind of speechless. These are just so heavy, guys. Yeah, these things are wild. Like, look, I, how, look at the compared mass. Compared to the whole Nadal sheep, yeah. it's like, what the heck this is this a thing? This ram. That is insane. Look at the back on that thing. Yeah, going from the back is just like crazy. Wow. None of us know much about sheep, so. I'm just like, Adam's just seeing. To figure out what we got on our hands here. Okay. What do we have on our hands? Do we pack out the full cape or just the. I don't even just know. Just the shoulder mount. Yeah. I just never walked up to an animal like this before. A little so, bigger than we thought. It's a little bigger than what we thought. What are you? You're a book ram? Why didn't you say so? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. Dude. So, Adam, so we were, this unit, they say, like, good luck on getting a 160. Right? 155, you better roll it. Yes. We're like, we think this one's 165. Well, we don't know Jack, obviously. Uh, so we just, and Adam just threw a tape on it. And what, what do we get, Adam? It's 182 and an eighth. This is freaking huge. You get it's a big excited, ram. You got to take out the whole cape, but you shoot a ram like this. Oh, dude, nine years old, 15, was he 15 and a half and 15 and a quarter? Something like that, it's huge. Holy crap, I, did, I knew he held the mass all the way, but I thought he was small, I think he was 14 here. But holy crap, man. that is a giant. Look at that thing from the side. Look at sheer that. mass. Okay, so here's the Ram 2022, died right on this little cliff and uh, just the most epic amount of teamwork from Trav, Tom, and myself. And I was shooting, Tom was ranging, Trav was videoing. Got up at 2.30, left camp at three, hiked three and a half hours in the dark through some cliffs and shale. Just had, there's a lot of people in this unit going after just a couple rams. Made it work, it was definitely a team effort and couldn't be happier. I, sh I would've shot a ram that was like 150 or 155. This one, 15 and three quarters by 37 and three quarters and we taped them out to just over 183 so that's like a once in a lifetime sheep super huge and gonna have to life size it because it's gigantic <laughs> so Tana might be a little pissed but just built a hanger so i thought you were gonna build a purse for your wife out of this thing yeah look at these things yeah that puts me to shame and we counted him he's about 10 <laughs> about 10 years old and he's just super heavy there's just so much character in these horns and yeah just it's awesome. We're Beautiful gonna ram, man. Start cutting them up, yeah. Thanks, boys. Couldn't ask for a better trip. Ran slam. Opening day. Nice shots, Adam. Yeah. Right there. They're actually not bad. It was just. Look that. It looked bad in the shot, but seeing on this side, yeah. There's a reason why he was tipping over and falling over. He was. He wasn't feeling good. Time to go beast mode. Don't, don't want that to hit me in the head. <laughs> oh my god. Fall with that, that'll knock you out. Here, bend, he is, over, bend over straight on. Oh yeah, that's good. He is hit me in the shoulders. <laughs> I wish he was a little smaller. <laughs> massive ram for a massive man. You yeah. gotta realize like this, this ram's big. It's, it, a, it looks even big even on Adam. I have a 54 inch chest. <laughs> These boobs don't run, okay? <laughs> what we're doing is we're cooling things off. It's been a pretty hot day. We deboned the sheep. Adam did a, he's deciding to pull mount his sheep so he packed a hole, all the hide. Well, hide slip from moisture and heat. It's really hot, we got it peeled, clean skin it the best we could. We're just trying to get everything cool. But I want to keep the bag for it so it stays dry so it don't promote bacteria and I don't want to carry any more weight up the hill. Like that. Hopefully that bag doesn't have a hole in it. 
Yeah, Nick. We got some meat, some meat in there. Then my, there's Trav. He's got, a, he's got half a sheep in there. And then I got a she, half a sheep in the back of my pack, so I better get that out. of the way is just straight up a long ways up steep steeper than it looks that ram died way down there in the cliffs that is a long trek you're just starting to sweat Adam me too <laughs> rest I need a snack. Almost to the trail. Where's that trail at? So we started this morning early, came all the way down, side hill this timbered ridge. Got down his bench, dropped down a little bit, shot across that rocky kind of A-frame. Sheep died down the bottom, went down that cut all the way to the bottom, packed it all the way up that ridge here, trail, mile to go, about out of gas. We're gonna make it. Oh. Gotta take another break. We're so close. I think it's downhill the rest of the way, but where are we going? Who's uh, out of water? Needs salt. You even got electrolytes around here. It's a long day. Yeah. We left at what, 2? Got up at 2? 30? 2.30. What time is it now? It'll be 9 by the time we get back. Yeah, yeah 9, 9.30. That's just, we're supposed to get a nap. When did that, why did we miss that, Tom? Yeah, well. The whole yeah. sheep thing got in the way. Sorry, it's my fault. Guys. Back to camp. What's for dinner tonight, boys? Sheep backstrap of the Rocky Mountain variety. Trav wanted to have the Rocky Mountain Oyster shirt, but we said no. All right, and then Adam is already trying some. Adam, what is, how do they taste? Pretty good, it's a little tough, but he's an old bastard, so. Yeah. Pretty good, you wanna try it? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a bite out of what Chav is making for me. Right there, oh, snap. I am privileged. I almost made one, to be honest. Yeah, I need a little one. All the meat cooled down really nice last night. And then, so did the the ram itself. All the hide cooled down as well. It's starting to get smoked in, so probably a good time to get out of this place. Getting some food in our bellies and get the heck out of Dodge. How's it feel to wake up with the dead ram this morning, Adam? I feel so much relief, like awesome. Now you focus on my kids and my family and help other people hunt and uh, yeah. yeah, excited. Yeah, you don't need 17 blasters. Yeah, yeah. lucky. You got, got Tom. <laughs> Just need Tom. You, you got Tom and his 2009 Vortex Minos. So as we continue to give you free content to watch, all we ask in return is to give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated on our newest hunting episodes. Thank you for watching.